Welcome back to the Power Public YouTube channel. Today's video, we've got the DAP retro cart rebuild back from the powder coaters and the chrome from the chromers and we're about to reassemble all the cart, get it ready to hit the track. It's been a bit of a long, arduous process, but we had to send everything away and wait for people to do their job before we could crack on with ours. We had to send the chassis all the way up to Brisbane to get powder coated. They've done an insane job. It looks absolutely immaculate. The red is like my favorite go-kart color other than Tony Kart, of course. I don't know if you'll remember from the first video where we pulled the cart apart, this was pretty ugly. So he's laser cut this up, put the DAP insignia in there, and then re-welded it back onto the chassis before it got powder coated. So now it looks mega legit. And also too, we had to send the chrome plating or the chromed parts away for re-plating. Now that was a huge task. It's become incredibly expensive and it's in huge demand and so not a lot of people are doing it. So now there's huge queues, like 12 months, six months wait, and it's mega expensive. Just to get our six pieces done, it was nearly 550 Australian dollars. That's on the cheap. We've got all that back and we're ready to do our assembly. We're gonna be starting at the front. We're gonna be doing a crash bar, star axle, steering column, basically everything forward of here. Might even throw the floor tray in, which we got as well as a little nugget from our friend, Justin Gaudry, the legend, up at Ipswich, doing the laser cutting for all these retro carts. Starting at the very front, I'm gonna put on the front crash bar. Looks awesome. I'm gonna use a little bit of Tony Kart hardware here. We've got the M6 countersunk screw with a washer. And we're just gonna nip that up first so it doesn't go anywhere. But I wanna keep a little bit of movement here so I can get those front bolts to line up. This being an old school go-kart, instead of having a nose cone clamp here between the front crash bar and the bottom bar. It's got these bolts and these things are actually drilled in tapped M6. So I've got some nice little uh, stainless screws there. I'm gonna leave that a bit loose while I get the other one in. Now that we've got all the hardware installed roughly, we can go back and lock it all off. You can see here we've had the job re-chromed it's the original bar, it's still got a few dinks in it, which is unfortunate, but trying to find these old uh, cart parts is really difficult. So we're gonna move on to the stub axles, and we've got some brand new bearings. Now this being a bit of an older cart, they just push straight in. Normally they're a bit of a press fit, but like I said, this one's a bit of an old girl, so they're a bit flogged out. Probably could have thrown a bit of powder coat in there to tighten it up, but we didn't do that. If it is a bit tight, I like this one on the bottom, just make sure she's not on too much of an angle. We've got to get that bearing in nice and square. Oh. Ah, there we go. If they are a little bit stuck, you can get yourself a little soft hammer. Beautiful. This one here is a little bit loose. We'll probably put it in with a bit of um, retaining compound actually, which is like a super glue for bearings. So this is a retaining compound and for those that are uninitiated, you just put a little bit on the outside of this bearing. It's a bit like a super glue for bearings. And it'll work on some tight tolerances. I'm not sure exactly, but it just takes up the gap between the bearing and the housing. So once you've got your Loctite on, just gotta push your little bearing in and this one's not gonna stay in because it's just a little bit too loose. So this bearing is a little bit too loose and it keeps falling out. So what I'm gonna do is get a zip tie just to hold that bearing in place while I'll do the other side and then that Loctite should set up and we'll be all sweet. How's this for a MacGyver job? We've got a little bit of a rusty washer here. I've installed it onto a bolt with a nut, chucked it in the drill truck of the old Makita battery drill, all faithful. Now I'm gonna get a bit of emery paper, give her a polish up. Check this out. So we've got a bit of rust on there, but she's getting better. We'll just go a little bit more until she's brand new. Mobile oh, lathe, what do you reckon? Bit of a MacGyver job that one but way better than the original. So I'm just gonna unwrap all this tape, the guys down after they'd sandblasted it, I would assume, have put this on so that we didn't chrome plate the shaft as well, which would have made it too big in diameter for the bearings to fit on for the wheels. So now that we've got that all unraveled, I'll go get some new hardware 
and we can bolt the stub axle to the frame. Do the same on the other side. Put the steering column in and then hang around because I'm going to show you the new amazing DAP floor tray at the end of the video. It's going to look awesome. So with our part that we made earlier, we're going to put that in there. So it's a bit of a juggling act to get all the washers to line up with the kingpin, or in our case, the M8 bolt. But you can sometimes get a smaller Allen key, hold your bolt up, and then you can wedge that guy in on an angle. And then just try to get the Allen key up through the center of the washer. Then using a really small screwdriver, you can just push the washer in, put your Allen key up through the center, rotate your stub axle around a bit so you can give it a bit of a, a jimmy. And then that should all line up. Right, so moving on to the other side, let's see how our little Loctite program's going over here. Looks like the bearing is staying in there. Now it's probably going to be problematic when we start slamming bolts down, so we're going to take it pretty easy. And the second side is always way easier than the first. So now we're ready for the freshly re-chromed fuel tank supports. Got some nice stainless steel button head screws. Now I'm just gonna nip these up so that I can still move them because I need to put in a fuel tank, a steering column, and the steering column support bush at the top here. Then we can install our steering column support bush. So for the keen eyes, you'll notice that this is a Tony Cart steering bush because we're going to be putting a Tony Cart steering shaft. Now I have modified that and I can show you that in a minute. That's going to have the 8mm shaft instead of the 10mm. We had to modify that in the lathe the other week to get that part ready to go in this cart. Okay, so off camera, I've had to machine up a Tony Cart 10mm steering column because this old banger was in such bad condition, I didn't want to spend the money in getting it re-chromed. And I don't believe it is a genuine DAP article. So this fits down inside the eight millimeter bush that's built into the front of the chassis. I couldn't change that, so we just changed this bit. So here we have a standard Tony car with the 10 millimeter, and this is our new modified one to fit down into our eight millimeter bearing. We put that in our new bush. We've got the safety locking collar down into the uni ball, put the retaining nut on, and then we can do that up with our 13 millimeter ring spanner. If your ring spanner is not quite deep enough to get up inside, you can get yourself a little uh, deep socket and then do the nut up until it's firm. Slide the safety bush up and lock it into place with an Allen key. Hey guys, I need your help. We've got some pedal options for the old girl. Uh, the original pedals were very stale looking. I didn't want to send them away and get them chromed, but we can put them on if you want. We could shine them up with a bit of scotch bright to keep it original. Otherwise, we've got two other options. These are standard Tony Cart Cadet pedals, and this is a brand new Tony Cart pedal. Whichever one you guys vote for is the one we're going to use. So get down in the comments and tell us which pedals you'd like to see on this racing machine. So one of the things we're going to do here is a little shortcut is we've got these brand new Tony Cart tie rods and hardware here that we had in the shop. So instead of using the ancient style, we would have had to send all this away for chroming as well. And cause it's just in really rubbish condition, I've decided to throw that in the bin and grab some brand new stuff here. So similar to some of our other videos that you've seen with the front end, we're gonna stick the right-handed thread in there, in the center in the steering column, put the two washers in, slide it all the way through. Now they do have a little step in them and the smaller of the diameters goes 
towards the rose joint. Now we can put our outside assemblies together. The rose joint on the top of the stub axle, nut goes underneath. Nip that up. Wow, that looks awesome. So now we get to a cool part where we get to put our modern wheel alignment snipers on this bit of old technology and see how the geniuses at their factory used to build the go-karts and the stub axles because there's going to be a set geometry here and we can't change it because there's no real caster adjustment, camera adjustment like there is on a modern go-kart. It's basically you run it as you get it. Here she comes. Ooh, a little bit of neg camber on that side. Let's see what we've got on the other side. Well, look at that. A little bit of toe out, a little bit of neg camber. Wow, isn't that amazing? This old cart is spot on, three millimeters of negative camber, a little bit of toe out, and I'm just gonna check how it swings. Comes halfway down on this side, halfway down the steering shaft. Now we have covered this technique in our other videos on uh, front end geometry. Man, that's pretty close, I'm loving that. So this is a bit of an unknown quantity, this cart. I got it randomly off a guy. It needed a lot of love and attention, but so far it's checking out pretty good. I'm really looking forward to getting this one on the track. But what I love about it, it's simple. You can't even adjust anything. The camber's pretty much set. You can only just do a little bit of toe out or toe in. Uh, some of we're retrofitting a few newer parts to the car just to make it look at that a little bit better. So now we've got our tie rods all set. I can lock them into place. So very similar to all our other sniper videos. Just using our wheel alignment snipers, getting everything perfect, and then locking the tie rods into position. Two hundred and forty millimeters there. Two hundred and thirty-nine millimeters that way. So this car is bang on. No bends, as far as I can see. The steering lines up both in camber, toe out caster and the swing test, everything I'd like to do to a normal go-kart, this one's doing it as well. Now for the part we've been waiting for the most, our special surprise, the brand new floor tray. Let's get it out. Okay, so guys, if you remember when we pulled the cart down, this was the old original floor tray. We had the uh, fuel tank had worn through, uh, all the old bolt holes were a bit flogged out, the front of it's actually split and it was looking pretty average. So what we did do is send it away to get a brand new one, laser cut out of stainless steel, and we even etched in the DAP World Champion logo. Oh, snap. Would you look at that? Woo. Oh, mate, that is unreal. That is so clean. So far, so good. The cart's really coming together and that floor tray just looks amazing. I love it. It's almost too good to drive, but we are gonna put it back together and we are gonna take this bad boy on the track. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't already. If you like the video, smash that thumbs up button because we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.